Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got another uh, comparison video. This time we're going to see if what sunk the German battleship Bismarck could have sunk Battleship New Jersey. But first, here's a word from the museum. Hi there, it's Andre Gardner. I'm on Classic Rock 102.9 WMGK every weekday afternoon. And I have so many wonderful memories of my time aboard the Battleship New Jersey. We've hosted some of our coolest events on that vessel, including the Locals Only Beer Fest, where we get local brewers together with our MGK listeners to sample beer for a few hours and enjoy music of our classic rock house band, all while at the same time loving those beautiful views of the city skyline and the Delaware River. What a storied history the Battleship New Jersey has. And this is your chance to continue that history for generations to come. We're asking you to please consider making a donation to continue its restoration, educational, and historical legacy. You can find out more by visiting battleshipnewjersey.org. And if you've ever been aboard that incredible vessel like I have, you'll see it's a no-brainer. Please consider making a donation today and help our friends at the Battleship New Jersey continue their fine work. Thank you so much, and rock on. It's May of 1941, and the war has just begun. The Germans have the biggest ship that has the biggest guns. No, wait, that's the song. That, that isn't actually right. It is May of 41. Uh, the Germans do have the biggest ship in Europe. Does not at all have the biggest guns. Bismarck sails into the North Atlantic for a convoy raiding mission. She's intercepted by the British basically every step along the way, uh, and eventually is cornered by British battleships on two occasions, uh, once she escapes and once she is destroyed. Now, because we have an Iowa-class battleship here, we're going to see if the events and uh, damages that destroyed Bismarck could have, sur could have destroyed New Jersey. New Jersey, of course, will not be in commission for another two years. She doesn't enter service until May of 43. Um, however, because this is a ship we have, we're going to play with fate and time and drop New Jersey into the North Atlantic in 1941. So, um, First off, Bismarck is a gorgeous ship. She's one of the best looking ships to look at, uh, only behind Iowa-class battleships. However, she was not designed for the job which she was called upon to perform. She was a great line battleship. If the Germans had have built a battle line and gone against a British battle line, Bismarck would have probably acquitted herself well. As a commerce raider, she just wasn't built with the range and endurance that a ship like that needs. Iowa-class battleships with a range of 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots have a significantly greater range uh, and would have made better commerce raiders. Part of the design of the Iowa-class battleships was to operate outside of the battle line, hunting down Japanese uh, fast battleships like the Congo class. Uh, and so it's not too much of a stretch to see one of those disconnected from the battle line and sent on a commerce raiding mission behind enemy lines or a commerce protection mission behind their own lines. One of the things that eventually doomed Bismarck was her fuel capacity. The Germans, if they have relatively full fuel tanks, do not top off in every port. Uh, in action, Bismarck had some of her fuel tanks damaged, which limited her range and forced her to alter her mission. I don't believe that would have happened to an Iowa-class battleship. American, and British ships for that matter, refuel their tanks fully every time they go into port, no matter how much fuel they have. So, uh, New Jersey would have been carrying more fuel than Bismarck, and so hits to her fuel tanks would not have limited her range nearly so much, and it wouldn't have forced her to 
return to France immediately like Bismarck did. The decisions that were made that doesn't really affect the outcome too, too much, but it's a major difference between Nazi German and United States naval practices. New Jersey was designed to operate in the wide Pacific and Bismarck was designed to operate uh, in the North Sea between Europe and uh, Great Britain. And she wasn't really designed for the commerce raiding mission she was sent on. Neither was her consort, Prince Eugen. British ships also don't have tremendous range at this point um, because Great Britain has so many um, colonial possessions all over the world. They don't need massive range on their ships. And so they can uh, just go into port and refuel. Normally that's fine, but in the chase for the Bismarck, a number of British ships uh, had their operational capacity limited by their own fuel supply. And so that does come up and a ship with greater range can potentially outrun these British ships. So uh, first off, Bismarck runs in the North Sea. She's commanded by Admiral Gunther Luchens and he decides to use the route that has always worked for him before. He wants to slip between Greenland and Iceland which tends to have uh, poor weather, poor visibility, and it's the furthest of the various uh, routes away from Great Britain. He could either slip down the English Channel to get into the North Atlantic, which uh, is just too close to Britain. Only a madman would attempt that. The Germans do attempt that later in the war with much success. He could slip between uh, Great Britain and Iceland, or between Iceland and Greenland. He chooses the route he has used before. The British know that there were only a few gaps into the Atlantic and uh, dispatch ships to cover those routes. Earlier in the war, when Luchens had successfully done this, the British were using armed marching cruisers and his two battleships, Scharnhorst and Eisenau, were able to blow the ships out of the water and outrun them if needed. Now the British are using their full-on county class heavy cruisers to screen these ports. Some of these cruisers even have early radar. They also dispatch the home fleet. Not as one unit, they're only chasing a battleship and a heavy cruiser so they can divide. The battleship King George V and the battle cruiser Renown, um, some other ships are guarding between England and Iceland, and the battleships Hood and the brand new Prince of Wales are going to between uh, Iceland and Greenland. They're already on their way when British heavy cruisers spot Bismarck. Because of the ice packs, the channel between Iceland and Greenland was relatively narrow, and one or two ships could cover the whole thing, especially when they've got radar. Uh, and so the British are able to see her. And the British heavy cruisers have a speed of about 32 knots. So uh, Bismarck's speed is about 30, 31 knots. So that they're completely comparable. One can't outrun the other. The British cruisers can stay at maximum range outside of the German ship's guns. Uh, Bismarck does have excellent optical fire control and uh, a radar fire control backup which is uh, similar to New Jersey. If we're doing this in 1943, New Jersey has a pretty good surface search radar and a uh, fire control radar as well. The German ship fires at the British cruisers and uh, they're able to evade. I don't believe, even though New Jersey has a better fire control capability, that New Jersey could have hit those cruisers any better than Bismarck did. Admiral Wake Walker, who is commanding the British cruisers, handles them excellently and is able to stay out of the German ship's range. And there's no reason to believe that New Jersey would have done any better. Bismarck does, however, uh, knock out her own surface search radar because of the concussion of her guns. The first time battleship New Jersey fires her guns in anger, she also knocks out her surface search radar, her SG set, her Sugar George set. 
So there's no reason to believe that that would have gone any differently. New Jersey does have a backup Sugar George set on the main mast, in addition to the one on the foremast that was knocked out. But it doesn't have a great view in front of it because the ship's own superstructure is cluttering it. And so Bismarck uh, takes a position in line behind the heavy cruiser Prinz Eugen, which still has a functioning radar. Presumably, New Jersey would do the same thing in this situation. Prince of Wales and Hood catch up to Bismarck and Prince Eugen, and a surface battle starts at dawn. The British destroyers escorting Prince of Wales and Hood uh, don't have enough fuel and don't actually get into the engagement. The British heavy cruisers, Norfolk and Suffolk, are too far away and don't manage to get into the engagement. Admiral Holland on Hood could have probably coordinated that better and really doubled up on the German ships. Uh, he was also attempting to cross the German ship's T, but misplotted it and ends up coming out with his own T crossed. No reason to expect that would be any different against an Iowa. New Jersey is technically a couple of knots faster than Bismarck, but she's still limited by Prince Eugen's speed, and Prince Eugen's speed is a little bit less than that, and uh, the smaller ship is a little bit hampered by the heavy seas in the North Atlantic. So they're, they're only able to make about 30 knots. That ends up burning a lot of fuel, but you gotta do that to run into the North Atlantic when you can hide. New Jersey's radar fire control is not damaged, just her surface search set. So she could probably fire the same sort of golden BB that sinks Hood. Check the link in the description for a video on if New Jersey was in Hood's place instead of Hood, would she have done any better? New Jersey's shells are in fact more capable of armor penetration than Bismarck's. So I, I see no reason why uh, a 16 inch armor piercing shell from New Jersey wouldn't sink Hood, which is armored against 15 inch guns. Meanwhile, uh, Hood started the engagement firing at the wrong ship. Bismarck and Prince Eugen were designed to be relatively identical in silhouette, and the, the British confused this. Uh, Prince Eugen has a superstructure very similar to the American ship. She has four turrets instead of three, but in the hazy kind of early morning darkness, uh, I think it would be pretty easy for Hood to mistake New Jersey and Prince Eugen and again fire on the heavy cruiser because it's at the front of the line where Bismarck should be, or in this case New Jersey, and so I'm not going to change anything there. Prince of Wales is able to fire at the right ship. Uh, and Prince of Wales manages to score some hits, even though she's brand new, and by the end of the engagement, more than half of her gun barrels are out of action through her own mechanical failures, not through damage received. Prince of Wales uh, basically puts a shot through the bow of Bismarck, which ruptures fuel tanks. New Jersey's uh, bow is completely unarmored because she uses an all-or-nothing armor scheme. Bismarck does not use an all-or-nothing armor scheme. She uses an older, uh, more World War I style armor scheme, and so theoretically could have survived that sort of hit even better than New Jersey. New Jersey is narrower at the bow, so she's going to flood a little bit less. She has a more raked bow, so her nose isn't going to go down in the water as much, um, and she has full fuel tanks, so having some fuel tanks contaminated with salt water isn't going to be as much of an issue as it is with Bismarck. In exchange, Bismarck is able to land a number of hits on Prince of Wales. Uh, these hits destroy the bridge, and one shot hits Prince of Wales below the waterline and is able to uh, basically punch through all the way to the keel where it fails to explode. Had the 15-inch shell exploded, it could have broken Prince of Wales back and destroyed the ship. Uh, same thing would happen with the 16-inch shell. The German shells, through a design fluke, not through an intentional design, 
travel very well underwater. Some historians hypothesize that it was an underwater shot that defeated Prince of, that uh, defeated Hood's armor scheme, and uh, clearly this underwater shot was able to defeat Hood uh, Prince of Wales torpedo defense. The problem is traveling underwater; the fuse doesn't arm properly, so it doesn't explode. The American 16-inch shell, I can't expect, would have fared any better. It's not designed to operate underwater. Uh, it would have probably lost its nose cone when it hit the water. Uh, and so maybe it punches through and, and leaves a hole in the ship's torpedo defense, but I don't think the American shell would explode any better. If it does explode, uh, puts a hole in the bottom of Prince of Wales, and that could be catastrophic, but I don't think it would. So not going to change anything there. At this point... Bismarck's speed is limited, she's down by the bow, and she's leaking oil that can be followed. Prince of Wales and the county-class heavy cruisers Norfolk and Suffolk start to shadow uh, Bismarck largely with radar. And they're waiting for the rest of the fleet uh, to come up and find them. Uh, with hood sunk, British warships from all over the Atlantic start to converge on the uh, Bismarck's last known position. King George V is already, uh, with the rest of the home fleet, the aircraft carrier formidable, uh, halfway to Bismarck. The battleship Rodney, which is on her way to the United States for uh, a yard period, turns right around and goes back into the North Atlantic without orders. Uh, Force H, based in Gibraltar, with the battlecruiser Renown and the aircraft carrier Ark Royal, sail up from the uh, south, and they they really start to close the noose on Bismarck. Admiral Luchens does something very clever. His ships are zigzagging. Uh, the British ships are zigzagging. And at extreme zigzagging range to avoid U-boats, they start to lose radar contact with the German ships. Luchens uses this to his advantage and has Prinz Eugen continue on her normal route, but takes Bismarck in a big wide circle and manages to completely shake the British ships. Uh, these ships follow Prince Eugen for a while and then run out of fuel. And Prince Eugen goes manages to break out into the open Atlantic, but doesn't have any successful commerce rating and ends up returning to France. So those ships are all out of the picture. Now Bismarck is all on her own in the middle of the North Atlantic. At this point, Luchens believes he's still being followed and he sends a series of radio messages to Berlin. The British are able to pick this up and triangulate his position. So even though he had escaped, Luchens didn't realize it and he makes a, a critical mistake. Again, I'm not going to change that. So the British now know where New Jersey is. I'm going to say New Jersey can probably still do about 30 knots, even with the bow damage, and she still has the fuel to make a run for it. The British ships start chasing Bismarck, but some of them misplot her position, and even though they're relatively close, uh, fail to find her. The aircraft carriers do get in range, and both, uh, I can't remember if it's Formidable or Illustrious, and Ark Royal are able to launch airstrikes. The first airstrike launched against Bismarck accidentally finds a neutral American Coast Guard cutter and starts to launch an attack on her. Uh, the visibility in the North Atlantic isn't great. Obviously, a, an American Coast Guard cutter looks nothing like Bismarck, or New Jersey in this case. Uh, however, the mistake happened. The British are using swordfish biplanes with 18-inch torpedoes. The aircraft have a speed of about 90 miles per hour when they're launching their attacks, uh, and their torpedoes are not particularly effective. They, they can't carry heavy ordnance like later war uh, American Avengers or Japanese Kates. 
they are able to land a couple of hits on Bismarck's belt, the first torpedo strike, to flying Bismarck, uh, but doesn't really do much damage to the ship. Bismarck has an incredibly deep torpedo defense system, although it's fairly antiquated and not sophisticated. In a lot of ways, depth counts more than design in torpedo defense systems, and so she's able to shrug off hit after hit without any noticeable damage. Could New Jersey have fared any better? Uh, New Jersey's torpedo defense is not as deep, but it's a more sophisticated system using five layers of liquid loaded and void spaces. And those British 18 inch torpedoes could not defeat the American torpedo defense system. However, the American ships have their fuel loaded in the external voids and the voids uh, in the internal spaces. So uh, these hits will contaminate more fuel tanks and further reduce the battleship's range. And because New Jersey is running at 30 knots throughout all this, basically making best possible speed, she's burning through fuel four times as quickly as if she was going economical. So we're going to start to restrict her range at this point, much like Bismarck's own range is restricted. Now with the British battleships unable to catch Bismarck, or New Jersey in this case, and uh, darkness coming, Force H's Ark Royal has just gotten into strike position and they have time for one strike before they lose Bismarck entirely. Ark Royal launches about a dozen torpedo planes. They're able to find Bismarck. Uh, most of them miss, but one is able to hit Bismarck's rudder. Bismarck has a single rudder and three propellers. With her rudder jammed, she cannot navigate with just the propellers. I want to talk about anti-aircraft and I want to talk about uh, the Iowa's maneuverability here. Iowa's have two rudders, a torpedo hit might be able to disable both of them, but with the smaller 18 inch torpedoes it might just knock out one. Regardless, the Iowa's are relatively maneuverable operating under just uh, their four propellers. So by turning some propellers in reverse and others forward, they can still turn the ship. So whereas Bismarck is dead in the water uh, and unable to do anything but circles, an Iowa-class battleship would still have some maneuverability. They could probably uh, counteract the jammed propeller. And they could also probably counteract, uh, they, they could also probably demolish the propeller. Both Bismarck and New Jersey had dive suits on board. Uh, Bismarck, they tried to send a diver in to the flooded steering compartment. Uh, it was unsuccessful. The water flooding in prevented the diver from being able to enter the space. New Jersey would have probably been no different Although our aft steering is access to a trunk, and he could have probably gotten down the trunk as opposed to going through a door with water coming through it at you. Uh, so th there's a possibility a diver could have gone in there and fixed it on us. Any aircraft. Would any of these antiquated swordfish have been able to make it in to uh, even hit New Jersey? New Jersey's anti-aircraft protection, being two years newer, is head and shoulders above what Bismarck had. Bismarck was firing every gun on the ship for anti-aircraft. They had eight 15-inch guns, which you can't really aim at aircraft, but they were trying to make huge explosions in the water. That's arguably possible. They had six-inch guns, which were too slow turning to be able to aim at aircraft, and I'm not sure that they had a dedicated anti-aircraft shell, but they were using these as well. Their main anti-aircraft weapon were the 4.1-inch or 105-millimeter uh, guns, of which they have... 16. Uh, this weapon system should have all been one model, but Bismarck received some old and some new systems and didn't have all of her rangefinders for them 
installed at the time that she sailed. Uh, moreover, much has been said that these guns could not accurately track an aircraft going as slow as the antiquated swordfish. Some scholarship says that that's not true, but regardless, these guns were unable to shoot down any of the British biplanes. Uh, she also had 16 37 millimeters, which is a truly crapulent anti-aircraft gun system because you have to manually load each individual round. Uh, and then there were a handful of 20 millimeters, which again were mixed. There were uh, some actual naval mounts and some, at least two of them were army mounts that the crew grabbed from somewhere and just strapped down in the superstructure. Um, and these guns had very little effectiveness against the swordfish, which had canvas wings. Uh, the rounds would just go straight through and the wings got holes in them, but that's not fatal to a string bag biplane. New Jersey has 20 dual purpose five inch guns, five twin mounts on each side. Uh, by the time she enters the war, they have VT fuses. So if we're looking at a ship like this, those could probably destroy the swordfish pretty easily. A single squadron of a dozen swordfish does not overmatch the anti-aircraft guns on New Jersey. She also has 20 quadruple mount 40 millimeter guns spread out all over the superstructure, each with its own director. These would have also probably done a number on the swordfish. Uh, and she has about 50 20 millimeter guns, depending on the configuration. Uh, and these 20 millimeter guns, some of them had a pretty good digital gun sight. Others probably didn't, depending on when in the ship's career. Uh, however, they probably wouldn't have been too much more effective than the Germans' own 20 millimeters. The 5 inch gun is way better than the 4.1. The uh, 40 millimeters, way better than the 37 millimeter. They might have been able to shoot down or drive off all the swordfish. Let's say it's a modern New Jersey. The phalanx is designed to engage targets going greater than 140 miles per hour. So our phalanx might not lock on to the swordfish to shoot them down. And we've got no other anti-aircraft weapon on board. Uh, so believe it or not, a modern 1980s New Jersey might fare worse against swordfish than the World War II one. You could theoretically put the phalanx under manual control, um, and you could probably target a swordfish coming right at you fairly easily with the phalanx. But again, the depleted uranium rounds would punch straight through and not necessarily chew up enough of the plane to shoot it down. Uh, and with only four of those mounts on board, and only about a minute's worth of ammunition per mount, some of those aircraft would probably get through and be able to launch their torpedoes. There's a good chance at this stage, a World War II New Jersey is able to uh, beat off the air attacks and make it back to France. She has utterly failed in her mission of commerce raiding, but she has survived to fight another day. The torpedo that got Bismarck is really a golden BB like a pure stroke of fate, much like the shell that destroyed Hood. So let's assume that the universe is correcting itself and a golden BB hits New Jersey's rudder. Uh, and now New Jersey can still navigate towards France, but um, the successive torpedo hits have reduced her fuel capacity, have slowed her down, uh, and have reduced her ability to maneuver. And when she's maneuvering with rudders or with her propellers, she's not going as fast as she should or as fast as she could. And so we're gonna say that the British fleet is able to catch up with her. Ancient Rodney, uh, only able to do 21 knots, catches her. And uh, the more modern King George V catches her as do a couple of cruisers and some destroyers. A number of destroyers attack Bismarck overnight just to keep the crew from being able to sleep. Uh, among these is the Polish destroyer Piorun, which insanely flashes I am a Pole on their 
Morse code lamps throughout the entire engagement, letting the Bismarck know exactly where they are. Bismarck is unable to hit any of these destroyers in the darkness and unable to maneuver. New Jersey, with radar fire control, could have probably damaged some of these destroyers and would have driven them off. Doesn't matter. The destroyers don't hit Bismarck. Bismarck doesn't hit them. Uh, New Jersey being able to damage some of these destroyers. Well, it does make the British more worried about the U-boat threat. As they get closer to France, they worry that Bismarck is working with U-boats and that these U-boats will sink their cruisers and battleships. And uh, so that limits the amount of time that the British have to engage Bismarck. If their destroyers are damaged or driven off, they might worry even more about that. In the end, it doesn't prevent them from shelling Bismarck into oblivion. It does prevent them from waiting around and picking up survivors from the Bismarck. So only a few hundred guys out of well over 2,000 are rescued. Uh, even though there are no German U-boats, lookouts think they see periscopes and they stop the rescue mission and leave. And these German sailors in the water uh, succumb to hypothermia and die shortly thereafter. So we might not be saving New Jersey here, we might just be condemning her crew to death. It's worth noting that Bismarck went to sea with a much larger crew than intended so that uh, they could capture merchant ships and put prize crews on board. And in the end, uh, this larger crew didn't help them in any way. It was just more German sailors taken out of the war effort. Uh, New Jersey, so far as I know, never had any provisions for additional crew uh, for prize crews. She was never used for that role. Uh, and I don't imagine she would have taken Japanese ships prisoner if she ran into them. She would have probably sunk them with gunfire. The United States wasn't worried about uh, getting more fuel oil or rubber or whatnot. We had enough of almost everything. Mm -hmm. If we came across a ship with uh, uranium on it, we might have taken that. Check out the link in the description to the video on uh, the Americans capturing German uranium to deliver to Japan. Also, uh, there's a link in the description to our video where we compare New Jersey and uh, Bismarck. So you should probably check that one out too. So now we've got New Jersey barely able to maneuver in a final gunfight with a couple of British county class cruisers and uh, the battleships King George V and Rodney. On paper, New Jersey is head and shoulders above any of these vessels. Rodney has an older style of 16 inch 45 caliber gun with a much lighter projectile and is significantly slower. King George V has some pretty good armor, but only 10 14 inch guns. Uh, and theoretically, she's also slower than New Jersey, but New Jersey's already been mission killed at this point. She's largely uh, disabled. Speed is no longer a factor here. Bismarck is able to accurately put fire on Rodney. Uh, she's even able to hit Rodney with shrapnel from near misses. But uh, she isn't able to score any hits. New Jersey's radar fire control may score hits on Rodney. Rodney is armored against 16 inch shells, but the American super heavy shell might still be able to punch through that armor plating. Uh, so New Jersey may well be able to damage uh, Rodney. The British ships are able to use near surgical precision. First, they knock out main fire control on top of the superstructure. Next, they knock out the bridge which kills the commanding officer, the admiral, and uh, forward fire control. Then they're able to one by one knock out the main battery guns and the secondary battery guns. You can't aim guns that accurately. This isn't uh, them saying, all right, we're gonna aim at that, and then we're gonna aim at this, and then we're gonna take that out. Uh, th this is pure chance. They are firing so many heavy caliber shells at Bismarck that any of these exposed fittings are being hit. Bismarck has both a heavy armored belt and then a turtle deck behind that. At long range, it's possible for shells and bombs to go through that turtle deck and easily enter the vitals on the ship. 
but at close range, like the British have closed to to finish this off, uh, they are unable to defeat both the armored belt and the turtle back armor. Their shells punch through one and explode before getting to the next. And so they're not putting fatal holes in the ship. And because they're firing point blank range straight into the hull, they're not hitting below the waterline. Uh, Bismarck is being shot to pieces, but she's not flooding. And Iowa has a completely different armor system. They have a very effective deck armor, and if they're fighting at long range, the Iowa has the advantage. Uh, she won't take as much damage, and she'll be able to score more hits. At close range, uh, she arguably has a disadvantage to Bismarck. Iowa's armor scheme has an inch and a half of shell plating, which is supposed to decap armor-piercing projectiles. And then the projectile has to go through uh, some voids and fuel tanks, and then eventually it gets to the angled armored belt, where it is supposed to explode uh, without punching through. And then it's supposed to, uh, it's got a holding bulkhead behind that that can catch any splinters that make it through the armored belt. At point blank range like this, the British ships, especially Rodney with her 16 inch guns are inside of uh, New Jersey's immunity zone. Uh, her immunity zone against the 16 inch 45 starts at about seven miles and goes out to about 15 miles. So uh, as the British ships slowly work their way in, first they're destroying New Jersey's ability to fight back, uh, disabling various systems, and that's allowing them to move in closer and then eventually they get in close enough that they're able to punch through the ship's armor. And that would defeat New Jersey's armor, and despite New Jersey's excellent compartmentalization with something like 1,100 different rooms, um, she will eventually flood. With Bismarck, we aren't 100% sure. Eventually a British heavy cruiser closes in and puts torpedoes into her, and the German crew sets scuttling charges and blow open sea chests in the engineering spaces to flutter. It's unclear if those torpedoes defeat her torpedo defense system and cause her to sink, or if it's the scuttling charges that cause her to sink. Uh, regardless, she sinks, and something like 2,000 Panzer tanks that could have been, uh, or 200 more U-boats, worth of resources are lost with her. Just like Bismarck is eventually sunk, disabled by British gunfire and sinks, uh, New Jersey could have been overwhelmed in that situation too. It's worth noting the British ships were low on fuel, worried about U-boats, uh, and were even running low on armor-piercing ammunition by the end of the engagement. But whichever way you spell it, Bismarck is never making it back to port. Uh, and New Jersey would not have fared any differently in this situation. Despite being a better ship, uh, she's facing overwhelming odds, and either way you look at it, the Germans should have made more panzer tanks or more submarines instead of spending those resources on the ship. As part of a fleet like New Jersey was, the resource expenditure is worth it. As an individual commerce raider, not so. There are better commerce raiders out there. Let's go back and talk a little bit about if it's a 1980s New Jersey. 1980s New Jersey does have better radar and has cruise missiles that can hit enemy ships at long range. Uh, we cannot effectively use our long range radars to guide those missiles because uh, the missiles have ranges well beyond the range of the radar. So without satellites or other fleet assets telling us where targets are, the missile ranges are limited to the radar ranges, which is 50 miles for surface search and a couple hundred miles for air search, um, roughly, depending on conditions. Uh, so even so, we could have engaged enemy surface ships with missiles before they got into gunnery range. Just like the Tomahawk and Harpoon cruise missiles probably couldn't damage New Jersey, they likely wouldn't have had much success against British capital ships. I could easily see Hood or Prince of Wales armor belt shrugging off a cruise missile hit just like New Jersey's would have. 
taking hits and damage that far out during the engagement may prevent the engagement, but it might not. I, I do not see a missile-armed New Jersey in 1941 uh, faring any better than a uh, gun-armed New Jersey. In fact, I think that uh, when British aircraft catch her, she would fare much worse. What do you think? Let us know in the descriptions uh, both which ship or which, which combat you would like to see if New Jersey would survive. I'm leaning towards uh, either the air attacks that sunk Yamato or Musashi. Could they have sunk New Jersey? Uh, or uh, also let us know if you'd like to see something different than that. Or uh, do you think I'm right? Do you think New Jersey could have uh, fared differently than I suggested? Let us know in the comment section. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. We also receive a lot of support from both uh, private individuals like yourselves and other institutions. The support we've received from viewers like you has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making five videos a week. So if you would like to donate to help us keep producing content like we are, check the uh, links below in the description for ways to donate. And remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we're putting out all of this new content. Thanks for watching.